imagine waking up on a chilly morning to find the headlines buzzing with news of an unfamiliar virus spreading rapidly through several cities on opposite sides of the globe. Flights are being canceled, supply chains wobble, and your phone lights up with deja vu messages about masks and hand sanitizer. That feeling of dread is hard to shake because we've lived this movie before, yet the question remains, when is the next pandemic? Today, we're diving deep into what scientists, public health officials, and global security analysts actually know about the odds of the next pandemic striking in the coming year. We'll also cover the signs they're watching for and how much progress has been made or not made since COVID-19 taught the planet a brutal lesson. So buckle up, because separating fear-driven headlines from evidence-based forecasts is more important now than ever. Before we dig into the data, do us a quick favor. If you find value in clear, science-backed explanations like this, tap that like button and drop your thoughts in the comments. The first thing experts emphasize is that pandemics don't follow calendars. They erupt when the right pathogens meet the right ecological and social conditions, which means even the best models can't pinpoint a year with certainty. The director of the Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security reminds us that the next big one could be anything from a novel influenza strain to a mosquito-borne virus we barely track. When it comes to pandemics, precise predictions are almost impossible, hence the mantra, plan for uncertainty. In other words, this year is not circled in red ink on a viral agenda, it's just the next square on our collective calendar. Still, virologists continuously scan the horizon for suspects. High on the watch list is H5N1 avian influenza, which has leapt from wild birds to poultry and even cattle raising alarms about mutations that could boost human-to-human -human spread. Researchers tracking the virus stress that an H5N1 pandemic is far from inevitable. Yet, the global poultry trade, dense livestock farms, and ever-shifting viral genetics create a tinderbox that needs only a spark. At the same time, dengue, Zika, and chikungunya are expanding their territory as warmer temperatures let mosquitoes thrive in regions once too cool to host them. Coronaviruses haven't retired either. Wildlife markets and deforestation keep presenting fresh opportunities for spillover. Given that menu of possibilities, how likely is a new pandemic in the immediate future? Tech philanthropist and health security funder Bill Gates pegs the odds of a naturally emerging global outbreak in the next four years at roughly 10 to 15 percent. This is uncomfortably high when you remember that low probability events can still wreak havoc as COVID-19 demonstrated. Similar estimates surface in peer-reviewed risk analyses, though each comes with margin of error caveats. Probabilities aside, most scholars agree that another pandemic is a matter of when, not if, and that compressing the interval between detection and response is the best way to blunt its impact. <laughs> to make matters worse, the Global Health Security Index still rates most countries, rich and poor, as dangerously unprepared. A recent scoping interview found that even nations ranked near the top often stumble in real-world stress tests like vaccine rollout equity and public health communication. Preparedness isn't only about warehouses full of PPE. It's the whole ecosystem of laboratory networks, community trust, hospital surge capacity, and transparent leadership. Gaps anywhere in that chain can let an outbreak gallop beyond borders before the world even knows it's out of the barn. That said, humanity now has the tools that were unthinkable a decade ago. Genomic surveillance platforms now flag unusual viral clusters in hours rather than weeks. mRNA and other plug-and-play vaccine technologies can produce candidate shots within days of receiving a pathogen's genetic code. Regulators demonstrated during COVID-19 that emergency pathways can shave years off traditional timelines without skipping safety guardrails. Wastewater sampling has evolved into an early warning radar for best known and novel viruses. Even antiviral development has accelerated, with broad spectrum molecules targeting families of viruses rather than single strains. These advances won't prevent every outbreak, but they can shorten the window between alarm and action, turning a potential global catastrophe into a regional crisis. Yet, technology alone can't erase the systemic drivers that keep lighting the match. Rapid urbanization concentrates millions in megacities where pathogens spread at lightning speed. 
Climate change reshapes habitats, pushing disease-carrying insects into new locales and disrupting animal migration patterns that once acted as natural fire breaks. Global travel that has surpassed pre-COVID levels means a virus emerging in one hemisphere can reach the other in less than a day. Add an encroachment on wildlife habitats and lapses in biosafety at high containment laboratories, and you have a complex risk matrix that extends far beyond any single policy fix. So why does this year keep coming up in news stories and conversations? Part of the reason is psychological. Years that end in five feel like natural points for predictions. But there's also a practical side. Many public health budgets, research projects, and political promises were set during the COVID era to run through the coming months, making it a key milestone. Some analysts also note that respiratory viruses tend to show up more readily in the cooler months of the Northern Hemisphere, aligning with the winter season. But the scientific bottom line is sobering. Microbes don't consult our calendars, and tying anxiety to a specific date can create complacency once the date passes and nothing dramatic happens. Instead of betting for or against a single-year scenario, experts urge a posture of continuous readiness. That means funding local health departments year-round, not just during emergencies. It also means building up genomic sequencing in low- and middle-income countries to detect dangerous variants early. We need to fix intellectual property rules so vaccines can cross borders quickly. And we must fight misinformation to protect public trust before the next crisis hits. WHO officials put it bluntly in a recent commentary, the world is simultaneously more prepared and not prepared enough. The difference between a deja vu disaster and a resilient response hinges on whether we sustain momentum after headlines fade. As we wrap up, let's return to the original question. Will this year experience another pandemic? The honest answer is, we don't know. No one can predict with certainty whether the next global outbreak will arrive this year, next year, or 10 years from now. That's the nature of pandemics. They don't run on schedules, and they don't send warnings in advance. But what we can say, based on everything we've learned from history, scientific models, and recent experience, is that the risk of another high-impact outbreak remains real and persistent. The factors that make pandemics possible haven't gone away. In fact, many of them like rapid urbanization and international travel, are accelerating. The good news is, we now have more scientific tools, data, and knowledge than ever before to respond quickly and effectively when the next threat emerges. However, tools alone won't protect us. The outcome will ultimately depend on how we choose to use them. Are we funding our public health systems consistently or only when a crisis forces us to? Are we building international partnerships based on trust and transparency or falling back into isolation and short-term thinking? Are we confronting misinformation head-on or letting it erode public confidence in science? Pandemics are not random acts of fate. They are biological events shaped by human decisions about policy, investment, collaboration, and compassion. Every choice we make today influences how well we'll withstand the next global health emergency. If we commit to making those choices wisely and urgently, this year could mark a turning point, not a repeat of past mistakes, but a demonstration of what real preparedness looks like. It could be the year we prove that hard-won lessons actually lead to meaningful change and save lives. But if we let our focus drift, it could also be the year another invisible enemy reminds us, again, that nature punishes complacency and rewards the prepared. So stay curious, stay informed. Keep the conversation going, because the story of the next pandemic hasn't been written yet, and every one of us still holds the pen. I hope this video helps bring some clarity to this complex and urgent topic. If you found it informative, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and consider sharing it with others who are curious or concerned about the possibility of another pandemic. Staying informed is one of the most powerful steps we can take. And the more people who understand the risks and the science, the better prepared we all are.